En fördjupad förstudie kan man säga att ett projekt som vi startade för två och ett halvt, tre år sedan med andra som projektledare som hette kreativ inkubator där vi vill titta på de här frågorna och eventuellt bygga upp en metodutvecklingsplats som vi då kallar, men vi kallar för en inkubator där man skapar ett möte kring de här frågorna, ett tvärdisciplinärt möte kring de här frågorna och där man så att säga, fick lära sig att utveckla metoderna. Vi lade det ända fram där, men det vi kom på i den nu var att, att det saknas metoder för mötet, det saknas eh, fungerande eller verksamma metoder. Eh, vi har varit ute och undersökt en rad undersökt, men möter projekt man håller på här. Och det, det vi tycker, det vi upplever, det är att ofta kom, till exempel konsten som är då vårt intresse på riksutställningar ligger i ett separat ton, så att säga. Det, det är inte integrerat med hela grejen. Man är inte med och påverkar den totala liksom, lösningen, utan man är med som en, en utsmyckning eller en installation eller på något sätt. Eller man jobbar med en dialogprocess som konstnär, men man är inte med i hela processen. Så att säga. Det var det här vi ville liksom komma åt i en fördjupad förstudie. Då blev det liksom de här seminarierna. Och tanken med seminarierna från början var att skapa ett möte mellan fyra personer som från olika håll kunde diskutera olika aspekter. Här. Så det är inte det mötet som är det väsentliga för projektet. Men vi sa att när vi ändå gör det ska vi inte göra det, det samtalet offentligt. Så det är egentligen inte det offentliga som är det primära i det här utan det är mötet mellan de här personerna och det samtalet som vi dokumenterar. Men sen får ju då, i att vi gör det offentligt så får ju folk vara med i diskussionen och komma med in och ställa frågor och så vidare. Och så då blir det en dialog ändå som då utvecklar diskussionen och som gör samtal djupare och bättre. Eh, så det är liksom själva grundformatet som vi har jobbat med de här. Och det här är den tredje sista träffen och så ska vi samla ihop det i en slags rapport. Och vi har finansiering i det här projektet av Tillväxtverket och Region Gotland. Så att lite ställningar med på tal också. Men vad säger vi? Vad vill vi säga? Ska vi starta? Ska vi starta? Ja, ja. Jag har kollat min mail och sådär. Så so, so I think we should go. Vi kanske är bra. Uh, one, one person has uh, told us that he's on a bus from Varberg to Gothenburg and then to... We can at least do so here. You who are here, who is here? Can we say so? A short presentation. Åsa, should we start? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, Åsa Eriksson. I'm a culture strategist in Håbo Kommun som ligger i Uppsala län mellan, ja, vår, vi har en pendeltågstation som heter Bålsa på det vårt här. Kanske då. Det är ju inte bra att jag fram, men det finns ju mer här. Ja, det tar vi. Kerstin Lohlogren, konstnär ifrån Blås. Ja, bra. Hur är det? Ja. Ja. Jag har jobbat som producent på kulturskolan här i Kåsen okay. och ja, lärare i bilden. Mm. Okay. Ja, hej, Ann-Charlotte. En anmogerad museumavart i Norrköping och är som manager av Tankart. Tack. And also this, this shortfall of people also happened to the panel. Because, <laughs> yeah. as you can see, I crossed over Magdalena Malm because uh, her daughter got ill and is in hospital, so she had to stay out. And we really, really tried to get an artist on the panel for the last two days, but they were all occupied, so they're all having jobs. <laughs> so it's good that we have an artist here who can sort of <laughs> Uh, cover that angle because it, it is important to have that perspective covered when we're talking about these issues. It, it, it gets out of hand otherwise, I think. And also, uh, Thomas Kurt is stepping in instead of Rudolf Antoine. 
but you're from the same organization in a way. Mm. I'll start with this. Why is, why is Rick Sutz telling you a Swedish exhibition agency doing this? Uh, we have to go to back to our missions that we have from the government to, to find sort of the, 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 co the core reasons. This is one of our mission. We have, we have a, a mission when it comes to contemporary art today. And we have a strategy, a strategy for that mission. And from, from that strategy, we should uh, work for the development and distribution of contemporary art in Sweden with a focus on the exhibition media. And this also covers the, the development of contemporary art as a scene, as a, as a scene, as a context, and also the, the possibilities to work for artists. We also have a mission that way, in cooperation with museums and exhibitioners, should develop forums for increased partnership to colleagues to other pedagogical activities. And it should be focused towards development of the exhibition sector through national international analysis, knowledge development, and technical support to stakeholders in this sector. And what has that this to do with what we're doing here today? I think also, the, if you look for, on it as a road, this is the main road we have to follow. This is the Reglia and Spiel, as we call it, our instruction. But as an authority, we also have to investigate the ditches, the fields, and the woods. We have to go beside the road and see what's... It should be connected with our mission. It should be connected with, with our missions. But we have to start looking uh, beside the, the big road to see both to expand the field, but also to learn from what's happening in other fields. <coughs> if we're making a, 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 a short reason why this is important to us, we can, as I said, we do, our work today is based on national and international analysis. This is a national analysis of how people, where people are living, since 1970 in Sweden, and how they're moving. And the blue line is uh, the countryside. Uh, the red line are the suburbs. The green line is the big cities. And so on. So we can see there's a strong migration towards the cities, which causes problems. And on top of that, we have other things that come in that we've seen in our analysis with the migration, we have globalization, and things like that. And we strongly believe that we need to solve tomorrow's problem with, with different methods that sort of created them, to quote Einstein. And we think that art is not a solution, but we need to have more holistic take on how we build our environments for the future to, to make them sustainable in a loads of ways, not just envi environmentally, but also socially, economically, and so on. Some thoughts about uh, that diagram, that we need to, to build dwelling areas in the cities, and that they need to support an intercultural society. Uh, they need to be environmentally sustainable and they have to be affordable. We also spend 85% of our time indoors. How much time is spent on the interior of our houses and the exterior of the building? Things. So we need to find new solutions and methods. Uh, classically, I mean, if we would take, you should, you should never go to a seminar or, or a conference and not see a triangle. <laughs> uh, here's one, today's triangle. Uh, I mean, architects, they're always there in this process. Um, this is a Dutch architect, you're building a new uh, dwelling environment in the south of Sweden, and this is uh, one quote from their, from this project, where they're focusing on social cohesion. We're in South uh, Sweden, isn't it? Yeah. I have to look it up. 
but I haven't got it in my head. Okay. We also have a housing complex like the building in Ödestad now, which is between Denmark and Twitter, where Bjarke Ingels has designed this eight house, where you, where you can cycle up instead of stairs, there's a cycle track up <laughs> around the whole place. Because you know the cycle in. But then uh, in, in another quarter, we also have the designers that have, and we have a bunch of designers over time that has been into housing. Here are two of them. Uh, very modernistic examples. Excuse me, is it possible that we get your presentation? Yeah, well, okay. we can put it. And there's a third one, very modernistic. <laughs> but there are also artists. Oops. Okay, whatever. What happened there? I think I put my hand, foot in it, as they say. <laughs> anyway. But it was my thumb. <laughs> but we also have artists that are working with houses. Houses. We have Hundertwasser, for example, and we have the Chinese Ai Weiwei. And I, th this is a house that he newly designed, which is being sold. It's also in New York. Number of houses that people can buy for astronomical, astronomical sums of money now that he designed. But some of the questions that we are asking is how, how does the interface look like where the cross-disciplinary meetings take place? How do we organize it? Is there space for open-ended processes or does it always have to be some sort of a set case that we do when we go into these processes? As we see in some of these examples, uh, and we know from a, we know a, a bunch of architects like now working with, for example, big art centers like the Guggenheims and things like that. Um, altruism becomes really important, but does altruism stand in the way for what does it mean for the process? Altruism. Is it more important for me to build an image, to build a brand, uh, working with houses, or is the result more important? Is it possible to see the, city, the development of a city, the city development, as part of, of a city museum's core mission, which is interesting today, since Sonia's here and she's working with the city museum of Stockholm as a building. And I know, for example, that the City Museum in Gothenburg are thinking a lot about this, how they can expand into public space with their activities, how, how they can function in squares and streets and things like that. And can also, with the public spaces, be part of their, how, how we develop these areas, can be that part of the City Museum's mission. And what can the co contribution of art be that is not a decoration, that is not an installation or a social intervention? What, what can art and culture add to the process? Those are questions. Shall you continue, Anna? I think uh, the next slide is yours. Yes. Uh, By the way, my name is Jaron Bjornberg. I didn't introduce myself. I, that's impolite of me. Uh, I work today as a, we've translated into a global perspectives analyst at Riksdagsdelnia. I think we have some people coming here now. Oh, wow. Mm. Uh, and before that, I, I, I also worked as head, head of method development. And that's where we started to work together on this project. project. Come in, come in. Welcome. Hey. We just started. Yeah. The, the, just an introduction. The, the less important stuff. Or mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but the questions that uh, Jaren are asking here was. Question. Yeah. Who are you? I, I will. Uh, it's something that I was working with with his first project. Um, my name is Anna Lechka. 
or Herdlika, as we say in Sweden. Uh, nobody can pronounce it or write it, but anyway, I have a background. I'm a civil engineer, uh, surveying and real estate economist, so fast as I could be, and I've sort of uh, slipped into this track of uh, working when I was working with Ericsson in the li late 1980s. We were talking about smart homes, and I realized that nobody saw the person, the human, the individual in that development. We were talking about how uh, we were talking about how uh, we could develop smart homes, and we had engineers. They have been working with uh, access technology or screens or whatever for 20 years. And they were living so they, in a house or an apartment. So they thought that they know everything about how people were using their homes. And they didn't. And what happened to smart technology in a home in the late 1990s? It died. Nobody was interested. We didn't find the right solutions. So starting at that point, I started looking at design methodology. And design methodology, you might think about form and color. Most people think about form and color when you say design, but this design is really a process. And using that process to understand what people are actually needing is where I started this work. So after a number of uh, years, I did this little study in Riksdagsdelmier two years ago now. And uh, we want to see if it was possible to create an innovative, innovative uh, incubators or innovative places for people to come and work and meet over different uh, borders of discipline, like architects, designers, engineers, whoever wanted to do it. And we can see that now in the development of, of hackathons, for, for example, where people that are interested in computer and building apps or building games are meeting problems from the real world and are addressing them in these three days or one week sessions where they solve problems. I've been working with something called the Summer Design Office where we invite uh, young architects, designers, planners to work for seven weeks in summers with problems and issues from different municipalities or companies. Everything focused on, on built environments. And then uh, a couple of years ago, I, I ran upon Charles and John Thompson Parkers working the same way that I've been doing, but they did, did for 20 years in, in, uh, in Britain. So we will hear more about it today. And a month ago, I ran over, uh, ran across uh, Sonia as well whose uh, master thesis I was actually supervising mm -hmm. like four or five years ago, right? Not really. Not really. Ten. Mm -hmm. Not five. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> You're being indiscreet here. But anyway, um, and when you talk about the built environment, you see that a lot of people, as Joran said, artists, planners, designers, architects, everybody wants to be or have a part of this really interesting environment because when we work with with the planned or the built environment I mean it's extremely interesting but if you're an artist and want to do public art are you invited from the start not really and what do we say from the from the planning or the architect sector or from the from the real estate owners well you don't know the planning laws so if you just rest here we will we will invite you later and I don't want that I think that we will the, the, the idea is to work with design methodology to get people in from the start. But then we might need new business models. Is it that case that architects who had their business models for two, three hundred years come in, design a house, leave? Is that changing, Charles? Maybe you can answer that later. So, how could we design, or is there already a design process to work in the public spaces with art and culture, without creating public spaces where the art is a little bronze cat sitting in a corner somewhere, or where public art is color and form? 
and how do we take these different perspectives into account when we're working? Um, we think in this little study and in, in this uh, series of seminars that art and culture as a part of the traditional process could create social sustainability, could create function and value, and value is something we, we will discuss today. And it could also be something that lifts regional and local development. But the question is how? So today we're going to discuss a bit of integration. How do we work with these different methods? They can't get in now. Uh, um, is there a need for experiments in this? Joran, har du strömsladdat den här? Is there a need or where we experiment? Because when we build something or when we design something in the built environment, we don't test it. We design it and then we build it. And if we're off on the wrong foot, I mean, then we have to change it later. And how does economy, culture and art really come together? What do we understand, need to understand about our different sectors to, to work well together? That's something we want to uh, talk about today. And what we're going to start with is hearing Thomas. And this will be a, a mixture of languages today. We will talk, uh, Thomas was speaking Swedish because we in Shanghai him a couple of hours ago to do this. So he's, he hasn't prepared his speech in English. So it will be in Svenska. Um, and then we continue with Sonja and Charles. And then we sum up the presentations together then there is, will be coffee, and then we're going to continue with, with some questions that I want to, to shed some light upon with all of us. And feel free to ask questions, be part of the process. Welcome, Thomas. <laughs> 